Flaherty. This is Flaherty's on Films, where we discuss movies from a totally non-expert point of view. This week, we continue our countdown of the AFI Top 100 with Spartacus. Yeah, so... that's Yeah, that's the movie we're doing. All right, you want to lay a little oh, synopsis on us? Here we go. From IMDb, the slave Spartacus leads a violent revolt against the decadent Roman Republic. Yeah, from 1960. Very, that's very decadent. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a short synopsis because it's a very long movie. Yeah, very long. Three hours, 14 minutes. Not three hours and 40 minutes like another film we may be discussing. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, so have you seen this film before? Nope. The only thing I knew was that the thing I think everybody knows about Spartacus, which is the final scene, the... I'm Spartacus. No, no I'm, I'm Spartacus. Spartacus. Yeah, 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 right. Which is not I, really the final scene, but it's the most famous thing from it. That's all I really knew. That's all I knew, and I had seen it before. <laughs> so I saw it in high school, and I did not remember anything about it. Mm-hmm. Um, initial reactions. I Can I just say, so Michael and I, we decided to watch together, and we're like, all right, we'll watch it like in little pieces, because it's going to be such a slog, mm-hmm. and it wasn't. I was into it. <laughs> Yeah, I was totally into it the entire time. I was hooked. It was a good movie. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, research is out this week. Damn it. So it is not BAM time. Then for it's Sam. not BAM time for Sam. No. Which it is, is, this is going to be a bad episode. This would be the one to skip. Right. If you're going to skip any week. Uh, I did, I did accidentally garner some facts. Mm-hmm. Spartacus is a real dude, but. But this isn't your job, so don't take any of these facts as. Right. They might not be gospel. real facts. Yeah. Spartacus is real, but. I don't know if, I don't think this movie is like that real. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Kirk Douglas. So, uh, another film we'll be talking about today is Ben Hur, which mm-hmm. we have seen. Yeah. Uh, and it is very kind of similar, epic, Roman of the time, but so different. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Um, and apparently, Kirk Douglas really wanted to be Judah Ben Hur, was turned down for the part, and he, then he made it his mission to make Spartacus instead with. Stanley Kubrick, which I thought was crazy because it's such a traditional epic and it's not weird. It is a normal film for Stanley yeah. Kubrick, yeah. So that's what I have for that. Those are your facts? Yeah. All the uh, facts? Do we want to maybe run down the plot in a little bit more detail? Well, I think first we should hear from some discerning consumers about what they uh, thought. Oh, the yeah, that's film. a really good idea. All right, so okay. we're going we're gonna to give you some Amazon one-star Specifically reviews. Specifically from the website Amazon.com, people looking for the DVD, here are their one-star reviews. Uh, I'll go ahead with Mark's review. One star well done. That's interesting, Mark, because you said well done, right. which maybe is not one but star. But he wrote out one star, so he didn't accidentally one star it. Yeah, literally the text says one star. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, yeah. cool. All right, you go ahead with this one. Uh, I have to mention that this is in all caps. The entire <laughs> review. Uh, George was a little angry. George Vick says, yeah. about the best Hollywood could do, a great slave revolt turns into a contest for a girl's heart mm. between the revol leader Spartacus and, believe it or not, Julius Caesar. So much for historical restraint in the formulaic scren roting <laughs> of the time or the director or producer right up on to who made the final decisions about this travesty. So George Shelfley can't spell, but I don't know if he's good at watching movies. Right. Because I'm, I'm also, I'm not the best at totally comprehending everything that happens in a film, but I think he's pretty off the mark with right. what actually happened. That is not what the film is about. It, not, it's pretty far away. I'm going to move the computer a little closer to me as I read this next review here. From my favorite, Stash Man. <laughs> It's my favorite part of this so far. Uh, Bought this movie after reading all the reviews, and I gotta say, I sure don't agree. Even for its time, the acting is lame, the set is mostly obvious backdrops, and the action scenes are so fake, it's almost laughable. It was like watching a high school presentation without the benefit of seeing your kid. Don't waste your money. I'll give you my copy. (laughs) So that was the Stash Man's review. I did not care for it. I liked Um, liked the the watching your kid in high school presentation. You know what? Uh, acting was not lame. That's where I most violently disagree with Stash Man. Okay. I mean, the, some of the backdrops, were, like the matte paintings, <laughs> were really obvious, but I really liked them. I, I find them looked, endearing. I really, but, and they look beautiful. Uh, they really do look nice. Yeah. So Stash Man, no. we don't agree. Dara Johnson, what does he say? Is that a guy? Maybe. Dara? Oh. They could have cut this movie down an hour and still got their point across. See, that's a review I do kind of yeah. get. I'm with you there. Here's, here's a reply, though, to his review. 
Perhaps short attention span. No explosions or car chases. Too much talking. Swords did not glow as <laughs> goblins approached. And I have to believe that's a reference to something. Or, I no, don't know. No, just like, that's what a fighting movie has. That's a good... That's, that's a, good a good point. That's a good response. Yeah, I like that. And that's that's it for our one-star reviews. Okay, good. So yeah. that's going to give this movie more context. Should we go through the plot just a little... Yeah, okay. So we start out, Spartacus is just a normal slave in Africa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then this guy who's looking for people to buy. And let's sort of go through the names, because even I'm tripping up on everybody's names, because they're hard. And I think his name is like Lentilus. Something like, I don't know. But I have the Wikipedia page open on my phone just for this occasion. Okay. So, so he comes to buy a, a gladiator, mm-hmm. and he buys Spartacus. Yes. Takes him back to gladiating school. Uh, his name is Lentilus. 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 And he, by the way, was just great. He, won an, he won an Oscar he for this role. Yes. Again, don't, we don't know that for sure, because Sam's not here. Right. It's not our department. Uh, I read that in one of the Amazon reviews that he won an Oscar for it. So he sounds, earned it. Yeah, and this movie only won four Oscars to Ben Hur's trillion Oscars. But we're not going to say which ones because again, we don't know. We don't know. We don't have, we don't have our research capabilities. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, so he goes to gladiator school, which seems to be kind of a nice <laughs> life. Gladiator school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What to you... the training right, camp. Right. I don't know. That all sounds silly. Um, so then, and then some... That was a silly scene when it's like the really dramatic music playing and they're like doing these like jumping over logs that spin around. I, yeah. It but, was but just... It yeah. was like fight theme music. Like, yeah, dun, 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 just dun, like dun. so dramatic. Yeah, like here are the slaves, but then they're like doing jumping jacks. Right, so then... I, I found it amusing. In this time, Spartacus finds a lady who's like supposed to be a sex slave, but he's like, no, I'm a nice guy. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that's when... Uh, that's when the the guy, the actor we like, with the L name, says, Lentilus. Yes, share share in your pleasure, Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> and I just so we just like the voice. It was I think. So much. Let's get that across. Yeah. Um, so then, some a, a couple of couples, uh, these decadent Romans mm. come, and these ladies are horrible, <laughs> and they're like. We want to see some fighting. Want to see some blood. Yeah. And then he's like, all right, I, all right. I love to give fighting demonstrations. Like, no, I want to see someone die. But also, make sure they don't wear a lot of clothes. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see some skin and some blood. Just enough to, like, t- to Just keep their modesty. Mod- yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, so then, and yeah, so. And those are two, so the, the, the two pairs, the two couples who come to see, those are important characters because one of the men is Laurence Olivier, who mm-hmm. is... His name is Cassius. Cassus. Crassus. Crassus. I have it. I have it up here on my phone. <laughs> yeah. Marcus Licinius Crassus. Cool name. And then another guy who's important, but he dies. So right. Right. I'm not. So gonna... yeah. So then they pick out Spartacus and some black guy played by a black actor. So mm. progress. Progress. In yeah. these films, he was great. By the way, I thought really. Yeah, he was. Should have gotten, gotten more of a part. Um, and he gets to fight with a trident, which is really <laughs> cool. Yeah, but it, I mean, I tried an Annette, so that was a f- funny comedy. It was like, are we in the sea? Yeah. <laughs> is this a pirate fight? I loved it. <laughs> um, and so they're fighting, and they're like, you have to fight to the death. And then the Ethiopian guy just, he's about to kill Spartacus with his trident. Which was a surprise to me. I didn't think he would. Yeah. And then he turns around, and he throws oh, his trident at the it. Romans, and he like climbs up to just get at them, but then he gets stabbed. <sighs> By a spear. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's mm-hmm. very, very mm-hmm. dramatic scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so then, let's go into the next scene because I think what was really surprising uh, when you you watch these old, long, epic films, you kind of see everything coming. Everything's spelled out for you. Everything sure. takes forever. I'm sure I felt that way about Ben Hur. Right, but then this next scene, the slave revolt just happens. And Pretty I fast. Totally didn't see it. What coming. was the inciting moment? Do you remember? He I'm, like looked just... at uh, Vivian, Vivian, the woman. Oh, he was looking at the woman that he's into, who was the leading guy. Vrinian. Yeah, Vrinian. Vrinian. And I keep saying it. And the slave is like, "You like that girl?" Or no, Vrinia. Vrinia. No, 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 no. They sold her. And yes. he's like, and the Roman guard is like, oh, we sold your girlfriend. <laughs> and he's like, what? And Sucks he's like, you. no talking in the kitchen, slave. And he's like. Revolt! <laughs> uh, uh, how about revolt? How about you about to die? How about here's this big pot of soup, and here's your face in the soup. Yeah, I believe Michael and I came up with some good one-liners. Yeah, uh, chicken noodle slave owner. Right, uh, beef stew, how about you stew? Beef nope. you. Damn. Fuck. Fuck. 
that would have been pretty good. Well, we ruined it. Right. Uh, so then, so that's and then the big crux of the film is Spartacus and his slaves, which there are so many yeah. gladiators. Like, if you have a school of gladiators, have that's enough gonna lives. happen. <laughs> you have to have so many anti-revolt measures at all times if you're raising an army that you're slaving. Right. Right. And um, you don't have guns. This isn't the age of guns. Right. So then he roams the countryside just collecting more slaves and they've got the big army and then that's mm -hmm. kind of the crux of the film. He is the big slave army against the Romans. That's mm -hmm. kind of where mm -hmm. we are. And he loses. He does, he wins a bunch of battles yeah. until he ultimately loses and yeah. To Crassus. But he finds Feridian, they get married and they have a baby. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. This gorgeous singer, Tony Curtis. <laughs> very beautiful man. Very beautiful, Be beautiful man. Beautiful man. He, so good looking. He's a slave of the bad guy. Crassus. Crassus. And there's an incredibly gay scene, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. not like gay in the way that Ben Hur was kind of. Had it's a not. It's not subtext. It's just text. Right. <laughs> like yeah. they're bathing together shirtless, and he talks too much. Well, what does morality mean to you? Do you prefer oysters or, or snails? snails? Yeah. Because <laughs> I prefer both. I prefer both. It was so wow. That I don't, oh that I have a fact about that scene. It was not, it was cut out of the film until it was put back in 1991. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. of being super good. That is very interesting. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, then ultimately the crux, no, the uh, climax. The climax of the film, which I thought was the most slow scene, is when. <laughs> yep, yeah. sorry, I already know what you're talking about. All the slaves are just waiting on the hill for the Romans to come, and then they march slowly mm -hmm. in these blocks, like. You know how you see cool marching band formations? That's what it was like for 15 minutes. But with a lot of people. It right. was a very impressive shot. It would have been impressive, and I would have liked it a lot if it was like two minutes long. Yes, yes, it, yes. We do have short attention spans. We do. Mm -hmm. like, like our friend, uh, the reviewer. Mr. Stash? That's, was it Mr. Stash? That, I only remember Stash Man. That's, that's all. I, I think that's all you need to remember. I've forgotten parts of the film. I remember Stash Man. That's how my right. mind works. So the slaves totally lose, but they kidnap a bunch of them. And they're like, oh, so the original slave owner, they're like, oh, we'll give you the slaves to sell off so long as you get a Spartacus. And he's like, I actually don't remember what he looks like. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. guy comes and is like, oh, we're going to crucify nobody except for Spartacus if you hand him over. And then they all stand up like, I am Sp Oh, uh, that's, that's a good scene. That's a powerful scene. Yeah. Powerful stuff. So they all get to get crucified. Yeah. Um, but then the lady gets captured by the bad guy. And... Then this is a lot of plot. Can we just skip to the end? Yeah. So, so, so the end is basically through a series of things happening. She gets freed, and she sees Spartacus, and she's like, "Here's your son. He is free, oh. and it's beautiful. It's moving. It's great." And then she walks off or rides off into the sunset with Lentius. Yeah, who turns out to be a good guy in the end. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, right. Um, relatively so. So. So that good plot. Good plot synopsis. I feel like now our listeners know this movie for real. Um, I have some discussion points, and these can be meaty or not. But um, this movie is an epic. What does that mean? And does, do you feel like this movie lived up to that? So when I think of epic, yeah. I think that, if only we had research here, I think there's like a definition <laughs> that I can think of, and it's like, like Titanic, like arm, like it's like something that's just grandiose in scale, and that's like a, a lot of people, big, big sets. Yeah, that's all I mm -hmm. think of an epic, and I so I think it very much is that. Yeah, I wonder if <laughs> the qualifications are also being three hours long, Super having long. an overture with no visuals. Right. <laughs> the first five minutes are oh, music. Yeah, sorry. The first five minutes, <laughs> Michael was like, "Is your TV broken?" Yeah, because it's just a black screen just and black. music. But no, that is... That's, that's, that was a bad start. There was a cool intermission. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think this was very much an epic. So I think what really made me like this film, and I wonder if I almost liked it too much because I kept comparing Second it... Second discussion point, oh, Ben-Hur. Ben -Hur. No, it's fine. It's fine. Just uh, saying we're transitioning to comparing <laughs> this movie to Ben-Hur. Yeah. Um, because, like I said, you know, similar vibes, but just so much better paced... And the characters, let's, if you want to kind of... What? What you thought. Oh, of uh, the comparison just in general or the yeah. characters? Uh, well, I actually remember liking Ben-Hur, but it was... I did have to watch that movie in pieces, 
And, I mean, I was kind of looking for things to like about it, and there were slow parts, but this movie, I mean, it had me glued the whole time. Um, but it's especially our main character that makes this movie, I think. Yeah, so, because Ben-Hur was just so hammy, and he just didn't really have a character other than being the epic hero of the tale mm. with just external conflict thrown at him. Yeah. And this guy... He was first. He was kind of just the stoic hero. I thought it was gonna be the same, but then he's like funny, and he's also <laughs> sad that he can't read. And so that's actually my other discussion point is his character arc because we were kind of both like, man, he's just kind of a stoic guy. When you first see Kirk Douglas, we're like, first of all, not a hunk. That's no. that's we got three hours of that. He Uh-oh. was forty four. <laughs> yeah, he looks so like, super old. Oh shoot, this might be a kind of a bad movie. Um, and then he doesn't really smile or have any kind of expression. And he's not really, you don't want to see a movie with just him. But he really does develop. I mean, so many scenes you see his character change. When he meets Verian, Ver, mm-hmm. Vervia, Verinia. Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he like, this, the training camp like gives all the gladiators like a woman to like have sex with. And he was like going to, but then he's like, I'm an animal. And she's like, well, I've been treated like an animal too. And then you see his character change in that moment. Right. Like there, like he's not alone. And then you kind of, when the, when somebody almost gets uh, trident. <laughs> trident it. When they, when two gladiators are put up to the death against each other, uh, Spartacus and another guy, and the guy chooses not to kill him. It's like that's that was another a, developing moment. He's like, we don't have to do what yeah. we're told, and we can fight back. And then throughout the movie, he kind of he laughs a lot. Yeah, he really he does. He kind of has like he can be clever. He can mm. be, and he has friendships. Like yeah. I just so that was really freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, so other comparisons been her though. I just I thought it was still beautiful and epic. But again, the pacing just really kept you there most of the time. Absolutely. Yeah. I, Things happen pretty fast, except for the main battle, which is, seems fair. Right. If you're going to spend your time on anything. Um, the, I thought the action sequences were really, like, they were kind of chaotic and kind of like how I think a slave revolt would be, except for how terrible the blood was. <laughs> the very red, yeah. the very shiny blood. Um, I don't know how... It, Every time they had the Roman Senate scenes, Michael and I both would make comparisons to Star Wars. We did just see the Phantom Menace. That's true. Which is probably the issue. I think the other issue is that it's called the Imperial Senate. (laughs) (laughs) That's hard to... uh... Yeah. I don't know whether Phantom Menace came out before Rome. So I don't know like who (laughs) stole from who. Well, that yeah, because it's a long, long time ago. Yeah, yeah, it was a long time ago. So Hmm. so is Rome, so I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to know when, mm-hmm. where that matches so up. So if Sam was here, we could have found out, but that's too bad. Yeah. I just want to go back to Kirk Douglas being 44 and him looking all of those years. And a lot of the other actors looked very old, which I, you know, you think at a gladiator school, you'd have sort of young strapping men, sort of a la Russell Crowe. But I wonder <laughs> if it was an acting choice to like have people who look rough and beaten and maybe aged prematurely. I can't say I have any preconceptions for what age slave gladiators should be. Well, so uh, they, the slave owner, when he's giving his little speech about how gladiating life is way better than normal slave life, he said, you will probably live 10, 15 years more, mm-hmm. which makes me think their life is pretty short. Right. But that's all I got. There's oldies. They're oldies. Yeah. Anyway. So. Oh my gosh. I Sorry, I just remembered this other. So we said the final battle was kind of a little long, but there was this great scene where um, Krakus was giving his. Crassus. Crassus was giving his speech to the Romans. And then Spartacus was simultaneously giving his speech to the Ooh, slaves. Yeah, the and they parallels. cut back and forth. Yay. And it was really good. Kubrick knew what he was doing. Right. Yeah. Maybe he's an okay filmmaker. Maybe we should take a chance on this guy. I think maybe he's going to do some good things. Oh, I had another fact, though. Oh, tell me. Uh, That Trumbo, is that his name? Trumpo, with a P. Nope. (laughs) I think I was right. (laughs) It's not Trumbo, you're right. (laughs) Felt very confident about that. Yeah, you were really, because you saw the film. I saw the film with Brian Cranston as Trumbo. Uh, he was Trumbo just sounded too silly and then when I heard Trumpo in my mind I'm like no that's way sillier <laughs> uh, he wrote this and was blacklisted at the time 
And I think the novel that this is based on about Spartacus was kind of passed around communist circles as sort of a slight against McCarthyism. Oh, that is interesting. So this is a much more subversive film than our Jesus C. Ben Hur. Yeah, yeah, it's a much better film. Yeah. All right, so it's been good to have us talking. Yeah. We love the sound of our own voices. Yeah. But maybe we need a third. Here's where this bit is going. Let's mm. call John. John ah, for bro call. Bro call. call brother John. Did we not talk about the part where they totally put barrels of fire into a crowd? And because it's 1960, that's probably real <laughs> fire and people being burned by fire. You know what? That did not come up. <laughs> uh, that happened, folks. Okay. Hello. John, it is your brother, Michael, and, uh-oh, your sister, Colleen. Hello. You are on Flaherty's Lun Films. The best podcast yeah. about movies. And we yeah, have... you guys could just call the chat every once in a while. The what? <laughs> Never mind. What's up? Uh, we are talking about the movie Spartacus. And we have a lot of questions for you today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Hit me. Well, have you seen Spartacus? A long time ago. It's very good. We recommend. Um, but we have a lot of questions about Roman stuff. So, question number one. In the film, they refer to Italians in Italy a lot, but Italy did not exist, Correct. Was that a mistake, no. or is that a, a term they would have used geographically? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, the peninsula was called Italia even then, mm. but I don't even think Rome had a province of Italia. I didn't think, and yeah, in one scene, like, Spartacus just has a map of Italy behind him, and we're like, that doesn't seem right. Yeah, why would you have that? No, no, and, and you got to remember, uh, like, Italy was broken up into several different like cultural zones mm-hmm. so in the, the center was the roman territories which weren't even roman of course uh, for very long the southern bits were all greek the northern bits were more get uh you know uh shit what's the word gallic uh, that's the word i'm looking never would have gotten that uh, no. yeah i mean so culturally italy didn't become unified until very, very much later post-roman empire right i mean it didn't become a country till. 1863. That's really so. Our brother John is a history major. I think that might. That's he's a history buff. Yeah. That's why we ask history questions. I'm within five years on that date, so let's give me that. All right. Um, We'll give it to you. What do you know about gladiating? Uh, I know a bit. Um, I mean, it's a blood sport. Right. Blood sport. Good term. Good term. But did you you have any gladiator questions? I just want to know what he knows. Yeah. What do you know? What do I know? Um, I mean, have you seen the film Gladiator? Is that it? Is that what it's like? No, it's not that coordinated, but mm. it is. Oh. Honestly, the way it's represented in movies is largely accurate. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, people like seeing other people get killed. Clearly. I get that, yeah. There was, there's the scene where this one rich lady is like, I want to see someone die today. Like... <laughs> <laughs> they, they were at the gladiator school. He's like, well, we don't do the fight to the deaths here. That's, and she's like, too bad. We'll pay you all the money because I'm so excited to see someone die. But if you've got nothing else going on, if you don't have television. Right. No fun. If you, if you don't have Super Nintendo, what else are you going to do? Right. I mean, you got to remember, this is a period in time where slavery is literally a class of citizen. Mm-hmm. Right. And they meant that term very literally, as in like a fifth of the population are slaves as in, they are property, and they could be killed for my entertainment. And that was just a thing. Right. So the... So... Yeah, go on. It just seems weird to us now, but it really wasn't then. It was actually normal. Right. I just... So the whole point of this film, like, Spartacus, his thing is about being free and freeing slaves, and the Roman is infected with the sickness of slavery. Like... But it's not like slavery sure. ends with the Romans or begins with the Romans, right? Not even remotely. <laughs> right. Every single culture, including, you know, the one that Western civilization holds up the paradigm, the, the original Greek civilization, all practice slavery in very, in what we would think of extreme forms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, no civilization pre, oh God, <sighs> 
really it takes the fall of the Roman Empire really to start having civilizations where slavery isn't real, but we just started calling it different things like serfdom. Sure, sure. All right, all right. Um, what do you know about the succession of Julius? So Julius Caesar's in this film, but the person who's in charge is named Crassus. Crassus. Is that? Is that a person? Crassus. Crassus. Yep. Oh, as in, like, it's supposed to be early Julius Caesar? Yeah, like, he takes over, but clearly Julius Caesar is his protege. And he's, and I think the point of that whole takeover is he's making um, Rome more into a dictatorship from this, and taking power away from the Senate. Oh, Crassus is? Yeah. Eh, I mean, you guys know the form of government really before the Roman empires, right? No. No, I don't know. Okay, that. so the Roman, the Roman government worked on a... Um, what we would consider a rotating dictatorship, almost. Um, the Roman Senate would elect, I think they were called councils, consuls. Mm -hmm. uh, two of them, every Wars single... Is. So, like, on a five-year basis, there'd essentially be two... We would call them dictators. I think, actually, the word is Roman dictator for some reason. Uh, but uh, these consuls, were, the job would be they would get, you know, ultimate power, uh, and their job was to raise an army and go fight somewhere. Uh, again, exercising extreme control. So when Julius Caesar takes over, and you know, even when Augustus takes over after Julius Caesar, they really were exercising uh, continuing rights just on a more permanent basis. Whoa. Hmm. Is it like... Yeah, you... Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Is, this... Is Star Wars modeled off of that, the, the Senate? <laughs> No answer. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we kept thinking of that. Like, it seemed like very Emperor Palpatine what he was doing. But I think just the words are similar. I think that is it. <laughs> yeah, they're just nice sounding terms. Yeah, I mean, you could you can make a. I mean, honestly, then you could just say no. my democratic body that is taken over by a dictator. Yeah, sure, we can make some parallels there. All right, John. Well, do you have any more last comments on the movie Spartacus? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of into this. Come on, give me more Rome questions. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I have any more I, Rome questions. I don't. I'm not smart enough to ask any other questions about Rome. <laughs> I'm highly disappointed. Come on. <laughs> but I'm sorry. All right. Well, if I think of any more questions, I'll call you back. But that's not going to okay, happen. Oh, I do remember that you. Start reading a little bit. You actually liked Ben Hur, and you were wrong about that. But Spartacus is so much better than Ben Hur. So just if you want to watch a Rome, a Roman epic, watch that instead. Which is funny, because I remember clearly all the bits of Ben-Hur, and I remember liking it very much. I don't remember one bit about Spartacus, except the bit everyone does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we talked about that. All right, um, John. Well, thank you for having this bro call with us. We'll, we'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> well, he sounded sad. Yeah. Okay, so... Spartacus. I mean, this has not been a very funny discussion. I think we just genuinely like this No, because it's just good. Yeah, it's, it's just, just good. quality. I'm not angry about anything. So would this go in your personal top if I... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's 100 films. Yeah. Me 100% so. as well. I think that when we talked about Ben-Hur, I was like, maybe I would put it because, oh, I see this is like what made epic films. Mm -hmm. But Spartacus is a way better example. So bye, Ben-Hur. You're <laughs> off my list. When we were talking about Platoon, it's like, well, how many war movies am I going to have on in my AFI? So at least I'll put that. And I'm not going to have any other Roman epics on my list. Right. So it, that'll be, that'll diversify my list, which I is mean, what I'm all about. I mean, I could have Spartacus and Gladiator. <laughs> I'm... I just kind of enjoy Gladiator. I don't know if I like that film. Huh. All right. I've learned something about you. <laughs> uh, so we liked the film. Give it a grade, friend. Uh, a. I'm also going to give it an A. All right. Not Excellent. A plus. You know, there were some flaws, but real good. Yeah. Stanley, uh, he's living up to his promise. Whoa. Uh, before we go, though, can we thank some sponsors? Yeah. Who are we sponsored by? Uh, we are sponsored by the New York Times newspaper. Which is has all the great stories. Oh, I really want to keep up with the world. But I want it freshly delivered to my all my devices and my front door. How are you going to do it? New York Times. That's not a comedy bit. No, I just that's described... even a very sincere uh, that's endorsement just what they do. of the New York Times. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> well, if you get this month's subscription, it's going to be a front page story about our podcast and Whoa. about how good it is. It's a picture of us. That's so no... good of them to promote us that way. Yeah, no words. That's some so, cross-promotion. Yeah, it's cross-promotion. Synergy. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah. So that's it for Polarities on Films. Join us next week when we discuss Sunrise, I think. That sounds right. That sounds right. <laughs> and cut. Cut.